No freaking way Adam Savage just said that about his AirPods Pro 2 hearing aids. Hey guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm doing a reaction to Adam Savage's review of the Apple AirPods Pro 2 hearing aid feature compared to his prescription hearing aids. Now, I found this video to be very interesting. Yes, I've already watched it, but I felt like I should be taking you through a reaction of everything that he is saying about these AirPods Pro 2. I think he's done a very good job at assessing these devices compared to his prescription level hearing aids. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I wanted to shoot this video to talk a little bit about hearing aids and where I am with my hearing aids. I have hearing loss. I have bad eustachian tubes. Because of that and some various other reasons and things I did as a kid to mitigate my lack of ability to hear, um, I had my left eardrum rebuilt twice. It's called a tympanoplasty. Uh, the second time worked really well. My ear surgeon, uh, Larry Lustig, is a genius uh, and did an amazing, amazing job. This is my best ear now, and it's the one that we operated on twice. So I should mention here, just having bad eustachian tubes does not mean that you're gonna need surgery on your ears. I suspect that Adam had some other things done uh, that he did as a child, maybe that damaged his eardrum. Now, if you have chronic eustachian tube dysfunction, it might require them putting uh, pressure equalization tubes inside of your eardrums. That doesn't really cause long-lasting damage, but if you have other issues with your eardrum or your middle ear, space, you may need a surgery to correct it, but like he's about to point out here, you could still have a hearing loss that you need to treat as a result of the surgery or at least coming out of the surgery. For at least, I'd say 15 years now, I have been wearing hearing aids every single day. I want the best hearing aids and they were often like five to 7,000 bucks for a pair of hearing aids that look just like this, little behind the ear. Also, I should state, I am not your standard hearing loss patient. Uh, because of my history with my eustachian tubes. Most normal hearing loss is in the high range. Um, for me, it's in the lower range. And that is also a di more difficult range for hearing aids to replicate. I should also clarify here that it is not difficult for a hearing aid to replicate low frequency sounds. Hearing aids are good for a wide range of frequencies. What's difficult is, is that you know, the human ear, when you're trying to treat the hearing loss in the low frequency range, you typically have to occlude the ear canals, which ends up blocking your high frequency in order to get low frequency vibration, which is not usually a worthwhile trade-off. So he most likely has a reverse slope hearing loss where he needs a little bit of low frequency amplification and maybe a little bit of mid and blending into the high frequencies, but typically a more difficult hearing loss to treat. Once they stop doing Mythbusters, I stopped having that kind of television money to spread around. Uh, and somebody told me to try Costco. And I bought uh, these Jabra hearing aids a couple of years ago, and they were, they were 900 bucks for the pair. Moreover, they're insured for loss. Moreover, I was able to get a hearing test with a couple of days notice. As opposed to when I go to my own doctor at UCSF, it can take weeks for me to get an appointment. I'm stumping big time for Costco within a specific bandwidth. The Costco hearing aids are great for mild to moderate hearing loss, not for the high levels of hearing loss. Kind of interesting here. I mean, like a lot of people who go to Costco, they become these huge fans of Costco and their hearing aids because they're cheap. You get service with it, like all that stuff. And he's currently wearing the Jabra hearing aids quite clearly on his ears, which are essentially uh, made by the same company that makes Resound hearing aids. They've just made them for Costco and for selling online. But he is pointing out an interesting thing here, which is this idea that if you have anything more than a mild to moderate level hearing loss, it typically exceeds the capabilities of a Costco uh, and being able to treat that hearing loss. But it doesn't have to do with the hearing aids. The hearing aids are basically the same that you would get from anywhere. It's just the people that are working at Costco, if they're not good at treating more difficult to treat hearing losses, which honestly I would consider a reverse slope hearing loss to be a very difficult hearing loss to treat, it would be interesting to see if you would get more benefit uh, going a different route with someone who, who really knows how to treat reverse slope. But at the same time, it, I, I don't agree with his assessment that the hearing aids are the limiter here. It's usually the expertise of the hearing care professional uh, that you'll get at Costco. All that being said, 
I have recently tried the hearing test on the Apple AirPod Pros, and I'm really impressed. I just really like them. I, 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 I'm an Apple guy. I use all Apple products in my computational life, uh, my Apple phone, my computer, my laptop, my vision, etc. So this integrates really well with all the equipment in my life. But I wanted to talk about the experience of using these as hearing aids. Now, I just went through something I want to talk about, which is when you wear hearing aids, and hearing aids help give you a picture of the world. When you pull them out, well, it's like you put your fingers in your ears. So if you wanted to put your fingers in your ears and hold them there, that's my experience when I pull my hearing aids out. And it, it can feel claustrophobic. It can feel isolating. I've several times in my life had the experience of a hearing aid just ceasing to work. These things are in a very difficult and kind of high stress environment. Your ears produce oils. Those oils can deteriorate electronics. They can get wet. Um, these are very thin wires. These are highly precise machines with some incredible micro machining going on. And so they do have failure modes. If you wear hearing aids regularly and you lose one, either because it stops to function or you actually lose it, it can be very, uh, difficult emotionally to move around the world that day. It's absolutely true. Once you treat your hearing loss, your brain undergoes changes where you're actually shifting the processing from your frontal cortex into your auditory cortex. But that happens after around 30 days or so. And then when you take the hearing aids out of your ears, your frontal cortex is not prepared to help you understand speech information anymore. So it actually sounds like you have cotton stuck in your ears like he's talking about right now. Even if I don't use these Apple AirPod Pros every day, having them as a backup for my hearing aids is a godsend. It's a wonderful side benefit. Let's talk about their actual sound profile. It is not quite as crisp as what I get out of the Jabra's. Uh, and I wouldn't expect it to be. These are general purpose music machines uh, that Apple has refined enough to be able to work with the FDA to turn them into a useful medical device. And I believe that they are. But when I switch out from the AirPod Pros to the Jabras, uh, the Jabras just give me a much crisper sound profile for the room. Now what Adam's talking about here is something that pretty much everybody who would use a pair of Apple AirPods Pro uh, versus hearing aids uh, would report. The AirPods Pro 2 with the hearing aid feature, they're fully occluding your ears and the level of precision of how they're customizable is not even remotely as close to even a basic like entry level prescription hearing aid. And so he's kind of mentioning this right now to where it's like, yeah, it's good and it's like a good filler and I can use it for other things. But when you compare the Apple AirPods Pro 2 to prescription hearing aids that have been fit and programmed properly, there is no comparison hands down every single time the prescription hearing aids will win. I think Apple turning the AirPod Pros into a substitute hearing aid is one of the best sub features I've seen out of a consumer product in a long time. Having been a very public hearing aid wearer for 15 years. Now, if you guys haven't seen my original reaction video to when he was talking about his hearing aids, and he actually used to use white X hearing aids, not the Jabra hearing aids. I did a reaction to that. So if you want to check that out, I will put it in the description of this video. I'm not naming any names, but everything I have tried sucked. Everything I have tried had a very bad user experience in the calibration, in the testing, in the integration. These were really, really just as advertised by Apple, straightforward, simple to understand, fast to execute, and awesome to use. So he is absolutely right. Me being in the role that I'm in as a influencer in the hearing aid world, I get sent so many crappy products that are they're trying to pass off as hearing aids because the hearing aid market is is relatively big. And just like Adam is reporting, they're all garbage. I mean, I don't know how some of these, you know, hearing aid earbuds are actually staying in business because they just suck really, really bad. I mean, even the, the Galaxy Buds, not that good. I will say that the Apple AirPods for the cost per amount of benefit that you get are probably the best ones that I've ever tested out as well. So it's nice to see another scientifically minded individual completely agree with how bad a lot of the products are that are being sold to you and how good the Apple AirPods Pro 2 hearing aid feature is compared to those. That is my little Apple fanboying uh, uh, stumping for these beautiful things and how they work with the hearing disabled. If you have people in your life who need hearing aids, 
this might be a great gateway drug to hearing aids. Now, I've said that a number of times before to where when you are someone who has maybe mild to moderate hearing loss or you can't justify going the prescription route yet for hearing aids, using an over-the-counter device is a very good stepping stone or in Adam's terms, a gateway drug to get you to the point where you're willing to actually fully treat your hearing loss with a prescription level device. So again, something I completely agree with with Adam here. One of the rhetorical flourishes I gave people a few years ago that a lot of folks have told me worked on people in their lives is to explain that no one who ever got hearing aids thought to themselves, well, that was a bad idea. Bingo. No one who has ever actually treated their hearing loss with hearing aids, as long as they were fit and programmed correctly, ever regretted doing so. Everybody's like, well, shoot, should have did this like seven years ago. So again, something that Adam is saying here that is definitely common. It's not just me being the one out there saying that. Clearly other people are saying that as well. Honestly, when I put my hearing aids in, it shifted my marriage slightly. I was much harder to talk to before I had them in. And I, I've told this story before, but about two weeks after having my hearing aids in all day long, every day, my wife was like, why, why, why are you tiptoeing around the house like a ninja? It's really weird. Why are you tiptoeing? And I'm like, because I've only just discovered how loud I am. Hearing aids have been a net magnificent boon to my life. And this is the first innovation into consumer product hearing aids that I'm really, really excited about. So I absolutely love that Adam is talking openly about his hearing aid use. You know, he talked about briefly there the stigma associated with hearing aids. That is honestly gone. Like, you know, there's very few people now who have any type of negative uh, perception about someone who wears hearing aids or that they themselves would need to wear hearing aids. Hearing aids have become these advanced technological devices that are basically like wearing computers inside of your ears at all times. And from a connectivity standpoint, it's substantial substantially improved over the course of the years as well. When it comes to stigma, I honestly think there's probably more stigma with you actually wearing AirPods inside of your ears and trying to have conversation with somebody versus you wearing hearing aids inside of your ears. And you know what, just like Adam wants to know, I'm interested to know what you think about AirPods Pro 2 as hearing aids and then ultimately compared to prescription hearing aids. Let me know down in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video.